they're determined Saddam and his bomb party will have bitten the dust. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Where did it all go wrong? Oh, my father. Where did it all go wrong? inspectors Rolf Akeus is in Iraq today to confront the regime about the alleged manufacture of deadly germ warfare agents. Akeus reported Where to begin this story? Others would tell it very differently. But for me it begins on the 28th of April 1995. It was my father's 58th birthday. The Iraqi government is cooperating fully with the weapons inspectors from the I'd UN. been married young, at 15 in fact, to my cousin Hussein Kamal. He'd risen to the rank of Minister for Military Industry. The result of a US conspiracy designed to perpetuate the sanctions in Don't you look handsome? I was proud of him and we were very happy. I had a lovely home and the most beautiful children. <laughs> The early 90s had been difficult for us all. With the Americans imposing their economic sanctions, it didn't necessarily feel like there was a great deal to celebrate. Are we going to have mangoes hey. Are you going to be sick like last time? Ali. No! But my father's birthday was a special occasion. On that day, the country would erupt into massive, spontaneous celebrations. He was so adored by his people. It amazed me that however busy he was with affairs of state, he'd always insist on holding a big family party. What kind of mood is he? Well, he'll be better for seeing you and the children. He loved a good party. Thank yes. you. Happy, Happy birthday. Well, what do you think? Our diet's going well. I've lost five pounds. And you? Uh, two and a half. I win. As always. I was his eldest daughter. And everyone knew I was his favorite. Children, come and see. Plans to build the biggest mosque in the world with minarets taller than the Eiffel Tower in France. Very impressive. Better be. It's costing me a fortune. People accuse me of extravagance. Why is Saddam building palaces while his people starve? When Nebuchadnezzar was conquering Jerusalem, was he bothering about how much bread his people were eating? No. That's right, Ali, because a great Babylonian ruler has bigger things on his mind, like building a civilization. The whole country referred to him as Saddam, our father. I could see why they worshipped him so. To me, too, he was never anything but a caring and dedicated father. But it's not always easy for a child of such an extraordinary man to step out from his shadow. Hey, what the hell are you doing there? Shut up. What are you doing? Go, go! You have no right! My eldest brother, Uday, was his son and heir. He'd shown great promise academically and received a first at Baghdad University. He could have had a successful career as an engineer. Do you know I am? Yes, Your Excellency. Then you know I have every right. But he was keen to follow my father into politics. <laughs> You're a good boy to have picked me up. New suit? Yeah. You look very smart. 
You'll make your father proud. As a child, Uday had been self-conscious of his speech impediment. It's your father's birthday. Be good. I hate these dudes. It's not right. It's it was my mother who encouraged and protected him. I hate my father sometimes. No. You love your father. I don't. You must. In your Aksadam is the sun. When you're out of his gaze, you're in the dark. Trust me, I know. At her urging, my father had recently made him chairman of the Olympic Committee. But Uday had a lot to prove. <laughs> my sister Rana was married to my husband's brother, Saddam Kamal, head of my father's personal security. Rana was a little closer to my mother than I. A little fuller in the face, maybe. She's hardly big, Yamaha. No, <laughs> but you mustn't let yourself go. Happy birthday, Wouldn't like Abba. to lose your place as your father's favorite. So I see. It fires and everything. I, I had especially... My husband was my father's most trusted general, his right-hand man. Happy birthday. After him, the most powerful man in Iraq. Come on, everyone. Photograph. Not bad for a farm boy from Tikrit. Charming, not even hello, how are you? Children, tell Rana to hurry up. Auntie Rana, hurry up. Come on. Yeah, yes, next to your sister, Ragad. Not next to me, not in that colour. <laughs> Put it next to Uday. I don't want to stand next to Uday. He'll make me look fat and short. You look fat and short, whatever. <laughs> my daughters are the loveliest of all my children, all of them. Even you, Rana. Nothing is more important than family. Always remember that. All right, everyone. Smile. We were an ideal family. How could that ever change? Then the female action should be 15 rounds of ammo in the magazine. See, once the safety's off, mm, hold it. You squeeze the trigger like this. Uday, mm. what are you doing? I'm just teaching the kid how to shoot. Well, don't. Not at the table. Mm? It's not nice. He has to learn sometime. The son has no memory of the sweet scent of the father, then something is taken away from the love the son has for the father. When I was your age, Dad used to let me shoot the prisoners. Hmm? Would you like that? Uday, leave him alone. <laughs> look at him in that get-up, huh? With that hell. What does he look like? My sister told you to leave our son alone. Oh. Uday's right. We should educate the boy. Talk him up. Do him good. And if a woman can't afford toothpaste or toothpaste... My father always said I was the wisest of his children. <laughs> but I was a woman and had no place in politics. Positions of great responsibility were given to the men of the tribe. Like my father's half-brother, Watban. He was the minister of the interior. So this little tart. <laughs> Torpedo tits. And lips that could... Suck your manhood clean off, you know what I mean? <laughs> and Kuse, my younger brother, he was in awe of Uday. He'd stand up whenever Uday entered a room. So that's what you were up to when the latest car bomb went off. <laughs> we're dealing with Aldo I, Excellency. How? By going out whoring. Are you interrogating them? Strenuously. And not strenuously enough, you donkey. You got nothing out of them. I won't be called a donkey by you. What do you know? You don't even have your own ministry. You do a lot of strategic thinking down at the Olympic Committee, do you? <laughs> what color will our beloved national football team be wearing next season? <laughs> you know, we already know the Iranians are backing al -Dawar. So, execute them all. Show them Iraq won't bow to this pressure. I tell the Americans. I told the British, and now I'm telling you, unless we wake up and act, terrorism will be the great cancer for the next century. General Kamel, your brother-in-law Uday has uh, paid us a visit. He's taking the latest delivery. All of it. So the foreman says, what do you want me to do? 
For now, nothing. Tell the foreman to stay where he is, and I'll meet you there in an hour. Shias in the south, Kurds in the north, Sunnis in the middle, tribes against tribes, but one supreme leader. I'm holding this country together with my fists. Everything okay? Fine, just ministry business. Oh, no trouble, I hope. Nothing I can't handle. Always working. How was your meeting with the inspectors? Do they still think we have chemical weapons hidden away? Uh, as you know, Your Excellency, what the Americans didn't manage to bomb in 91, we have subsequently destroyed ourselves. But I am not going to tell them that yet. Excellent. Yeah, meanwhile, the country's being crippled. If we have destroyed all our weapons, why not tell the UN now? <laughs> we have a lot of enemies, Kusei. Never reveal anything you don't have to. As you always say, Your Excellency, the better part of war is deception. Good! Excellency. Good night, my boy. Happy birthday again. Happy birthday, my president. Happy birthday. What, Bon? Good night. Good night. You say? Good night, Father. Good day. All these crooks get ministries and make a mess of everything. I'm better than them. When do I get my ministry? When I will it. Hussein Kumail gets a huge budget and all the firepower he can lay his hands on. I like him. He's a man of ideas, a builder like me. He's thirsty for power. He wants what's mine, but I'll fight him. I will never stop. Of course you won't. That's how I raised you, boy. You can't trust a man who doesn't wink or smoke. It's weird. <laughs> There's no man I trust more. But why him? Why not me? Because he's loyal, he doesn't flaunt his wealth, and he knows battle. Men respect him. He built the Republican Guard from nothing. And what's more, he's given me grandchildren. Of course there were tensions. There always are in families with so many talented and ambitious individuals. But as far as I was aware, there was nothing to worry about. What are you going to do? There's nothing I can do. Jordanians are expecting delivery tomorrow. What do you suggest I do? Go to the president and complain that his son stole from me, the petrol I stole from him. Excellency. So, how are you feeling? Uh, I'll be okay. Just some bruising. Um, there's nothing I could do. Oh, of course not. He's the president's son. The thing I don't understand is how he knew it was here. Stop. I understand you wanted to please Uday. He can be a very persuasive man. Again. I swear, but just please! 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 Yeah, I believe you. I believe you. Let's go. I remember it so well, my father's 58th birthday. As the whole country celebrated with us, I thought how lucky I was to be part of such a wonderful family. I had loving brothers and sisters. We'd have done anything for each other. had a caring father who was an inspiration to us all. And I had a devoted husband. After 15 years of marriage, we were still very much in love. Good party. 
Yes. All right. Little did I know that that would be the last day we'd spend together as a happy family. My father had always surrounded himself with family. But in the end, it would be those closest to him, those he trusted the most, that would betray him. And we'd see our world fall apart. by remote control so that it destroyed one of the cars belonging to the Iranian Mujahideen and uh, there were two Iraqi citizens nearby who were killed by town of Zaku, armed Ba'ath Party militiamen stroll around as if they own the place. My father was so misunderstood. He was doing what he had to to hold the country together. enemies on all sides. The Iranians, the American spies, UN inspectors who were trying to deprive our country of its right to defend itself. The people, the families we found lying all around had not been injured. They'd been poisoned by chemical bombs and shells containing cyanide, mustard and other nerve gases. Iraqi oil exports used to bring in 13 billion dollars a year. I know, I'm the minister in charge of oil exports. There was only one man he could trust with such delicate negotiations. My husband. You tell the Americans, tell them to lift the sanctions. They are the ones killing Iraqi children, not me. The UN wants proof. You now have our full and final disclosure. We have no capability left. Can the UN justify these sanctions? We will take a look at these. My husband was not only a decorated general, but a highly skilled diplomat. He worked day and night for my father and Iraq. General Hussein Kamal Al-Majid, Taras Rabinovich. Afternoon, General. Good afternoon. Do you have everything we talked about? Yes, everything. We can provide free key fuses with them. And the RPG-7? It will penetrate 150 millimeter of armor plate. Mm. I will also give you 50,000 AKs for the price we agreed. Very good, then. For $10 million, you have yourself a deal. The president will be delighted. Excellent. It is always good to do business with you. As a token of my company's thanks. Hussein was from a humble family. He wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was a respectable, self-made man. Ukrainian vodka, best in the world. Yes, why not? Nastrovia. Nastrovia. Excellent. The Ukrainian delegation has just left. So, what did you settle on? 10,000 RPGs, 20,000 artillery fuses, 50 anti-aircraft guns with 250,000 cartridges, and they even threw in 50,000 AKs as well. I think you're going to be rather pleased with the price. 15 million. Sounds like a good deal. Yes, I thought it was something of a bargain, too. Well done, Hussain. I do it all for you.
Excellency. I want you to go to Amman tonight and pay that into my account with the Central Gulf Bank. I won't give you any trouble at the border. Yes, General. As a young soldier, Hussein had served as my father's personal bodyguard. My president? On one occasion, he threw himself in front of an assassin's bullet to protect my father. He was a man who could be trusted, implicitly. No woman could ask for a better husband. father would think about you humiliating me like this. I won't let you do this to me again. I was a child when we married. I didn't know any better, but I'm telling you, I won't stand for it now. I won't. Unfortunately, not all the men of the tribe were of such high caliber. Come in. The Minister of the Interior, Your Excellency. Make sure we're not disturbed. Yes, Your Excellency. What about? My President, I have terrific news. We liquidated the key members of the Al Dawar terrorist. Faisal. My father's no. half brothers, in particular, were a source of great frustration. No interruptions. Not by anyone. What are you playing at? Another Aldawar car bomb yesterday. That's the fourth in as many weeks, what, bud? Your Excellency, I can assure you that it's... I want to see the President. His Excellency said he must not be disturbed. Move. I'm sorry, sir, but I've been given strict instructions. Don't you know who I am? Yes, sir. Your Excellency, I will not tolerate this! My command, vocal dedication! There are so many lies told about the incident involving my brother and the security officer that spring. Give it to me. The truth was that my brother knew people like Watbaum were failing in their responsibilities. Sometimes Uday's frustrations got the better of him. What have you done? He showed no respect! Respect? Oh. What would you know about respect? He was laughing at me! Because you're a joke! You've made a mockery of this family. No! You're an embarrassment to me! Yeah, but you just let me explain! I'm talking! You think you can do what you want? Behave like a pig. <laughs> Butcher my stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. You disgust me. <laughs> I don't know what you're up to. Lining your pockets. Oh, what about what, man? Huh? What about Hussein? Come out. Don't bring Hussein into this. Well, the same rules apply to him. He's like a ten of you. <laughs> You don't know. You don't know what he really gets up to in that ministry of his. All oh, that money you give him. 
You want proof? No. I want you to clean your act up. If there's another incident like this, I'll have you shot. Yabba, please. Get out of my sight. Jealousy is the curse of tribal people. There were those in our tribe who wanted to poison my father against one another. My father was wise to this. But when you're told something so many times, you begin to wonder if there's a grain of truth in it. The United Nations inspectors left their base at the Palestine Hotel in Baghdad for the last time today. Speaking to reporters, Ralph Akeu said monitoring systems designed to spot Iraqi violations of the UN's disarmament demands were, quote, humming along satisfactorily. Progress has been made on weapons disclosures. It's my understanding that Iraq intends to comply with the yeah, UN demand. Little one. I wasn't expecting you. Is something the matter? Can't an old man pop in on his favorite child? It's I'll give more detail. <laughs> Have you seen a doctor? Doctors are like wives. All they do is nag. Ah, the same. Excellency, to what we owe the honor. Friendly visit, a social call. Well, please, sir, come in. Do you want some tea? Something to eat? Hmm, something sweet. Like you, my little one. Now, leave the men to talk. Inspectors suspect everything. That's their job. But they can't prove anything. Good. When the UN lift the sanctions and the oil money starts flowing again, I want to rebuild our strategic capabilities bigger and better than before. We will be the Arab superpower once again, Your Excellency. If only I had more like you. What's he so afraid of, do you think? He's in awe of you, Excellency. People with a clear conscience have nothing to be scared of. Do you trust your servants, Suzanne? Yes. I've had them there a long time. Doesn't mean you can trust them. One of my valets with me for years was caught stealing soap from one of the palace bathrooms, caught red-handed. His mother came to plead his case, told me his children were getting ill because they couldn't keep clean. Eating with dirty hands, blame the sanctions. I said, couldn't you have used water? May do. You can live without scent itself, surely. What did you do with him? What I do with all servants who steal from me. I had him hanged and made sure all the other servants watched. But what really pained me was that this man, whom I had trusted, could betray me. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's my little general. He wanted to see you. <laughs> Can I ride on your back, Granddad? Oh, you're far too big for that now. Oh, please. Oh, I'm far too old. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you know the best quality a leader can have? The ability to be harsh with those closest to him. Those he loves the most. Now, I really must go. Oh. 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 Say good night to Grandpa. Good night, Granddad. Good night, Arlene. Good night to Mama. Good night. Good night, Excellency. Good night. It's late and I've kept you up. Forgive me. Children need their sleep. It's fine. It's good to see you. Is everything all right, Yabba? Yes, yes. Just this blasted back of mine. I'll see my doctor in the morning. Don't you worry about it. Good night. Well? Who knows? What the hell is going on? Come on, Faisal. The chairman is waiting for you. Come on. What's happening here? Where the minister hears about this.
this, he'll be in no position to say anything! <laughs> What do you want, Uda? I want you to do something for me. Well, you can fuck off! <laughs> Is that any way to speak in front of your daughter? Now, this is what I want you to do for me. My president, I can keep silent no longer. Well, go on. A week ago, the interior minister received an intelligence warning of yesterday's bombing in Baghdad. Well, what did my brother do? Well, the minister had a lot of uh, private business that day. So he did nothing? Nothing at all, Your Excellency. <laughs> the truth is, he's hardly ever at the Ministry. But that's not all. None of these intelligence reports have been acted upon. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're a disgrace to your Ministry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brother. Don't call me brother. I don't expect to be forgiven after a month or two. This is it. You've had all your chances. You'll never hold public office again. You're guilty of criminal neglect, total incompetence, ingratitude. You're lazy, you're idle, you don't care, you drink, you whore. You're a disgrace to your position and to this tribe. My son was right, you are a donkey. What am I going to do with you? You worm. Excellency. Get out! My father used to say that when you're training a puppy, you can hit and punish it in various ways. And eventually, it will learn. But when a dog grows big and strong, you have to think twice about punishing it. It might bite you. Good morning, Excellency. My boy. Hmm. I want to reshuffle the cabinet. I have something in mind for you. He was surrounded by dogs. Dogs that got bigger and greedier every day. Every year in August, we'd celebrate the Day of Days. This was in remembrance of our victory over Iran in the Eight-Year War. The war cost us dearly. 375,000 valiant Iraqi lives. But it was a matter of national honor, and some battles must be fought for pride's sake. We have two routes for your appearance, and as usual, we will choose a new third route before setting off, which we will change mid-journey. Good. The next item on my agenda concerns my beloved son, Uday. As head of the Olympic Committee, he does not have a place at this table. I have therefore decided to create a new ministry, the Department for Military and Industrial Repairs. I'm sure everyone will agree he has earned a post in government. Excuse me, Excellency, but uh, you said Uday will be Minister for Military and Industrial Repairs? That's right. I'm sorry, Excellency. What exactly would be the remit of this ministry? He'd supervise the budgets and repair of military and industrial equipment. Furthermore... So he would need access to accounts and inventories of other ministries? Yes. Is that a problem? No, no. Uday is, uh, inexperienced. He'd learn on the job. 
Forgive me, Excellency. He doesn't have the... Doesn't have the what? Uday has not yet proven he is capable of running a football team, let alone a ministry. Your objection has been noted, Minister for Military Industry, but as far as I'm aware, I'm still the president and the decision is mine. to get us killed. No one defies the president, no one. Not even you. Listen to me. <clears throat> if I need you, <clears throat> will you be with me? You're my brother. Of course I will. Good. <clears throat> presidential family, we were guests of honor at a military banquet. Preparing for that evening's festivities, I had no idea that my family would soon be at war again. But this time, with itself. Are you ready? I'm not in the mood. We have to go. Disrespecting me to my father in front of the council! Go home, sober up! You wanna go to war with me? Stop it! Is that what you want? Both of you! <laughs> Ragad! What will I do to your husband? Uday! Uday, no! Is this our room and fight? Fight for you, coward! Looks like your little boy is more of a man than you are, Hussein. <laughs> but you can't hide behind your wife and kids anymore. Something, something I shouldn't have. Saying what? Saddam's given Uday a ministry. I questioned his decision. Why? Why? Because it will make life impossible for me. You have to go to my father. Tell him what happened. That won't do any good. Do you think Uday will leave it like this? When he hears what Uday's it's done. It's too late for that. Uday attacks Saddam you! Saddam won't control Uday. He can't. He created this monster and now it's out of his hands. We have to go now. Go. Well, Aman. For how long? Look, just a few weeks, a month, nothing more. Ayesha! How is this going to look to my father? To leave in the middle of the night like a gang of fugitives? We don't have any choice. Now, all that matters is that you and the children are safe. Now, help Ayesha and go and get them up. Hussein! I have to call my brother. Perhaps I should have questioned my husband more closely. Hussein was known to be hasty, and I couldn't stop him. And I was scared that if Hussein left on his own and circumstances became difficult for him, it could have been said that I didn't stand by my own husband. There were differences between my husband and my father. But those would pale in comparison with what was about to happen. If only we'd known we could have turned back there and then. Yeah. 
international field, Iraq needs him. Uh, and he's right, but... Uh, <laughs> Maybe you'd like to come. Have you ever been to Geneva? I'd go anywhere with you. On, Uncle. <laughs> How is retirement? I'm not retiring, you fuck. Is that any way to talk to a government minister? You fuck it up, just like everything else. Now, this is a private party, so fuck off out of it. Come on, baby. You'll only disappoint you. Ask his wife. You piece of shit! I'm not just a bloody palace guard. You think your father will forgive you if you kill his own brother? Hey! We've given him fluids and a lot of blood. The left leg is the most badly damaged. The muscle and the main nerve has suffered a great deal of damage. The right leg has also been hit. I'm very sorry, Excellency. Where do you live? We'll do our very best, Excellency. Fine new day. Yes, Father. Whether my husband was right or wrong, I knew he had to apologize to my father. I thought all I needed was a few days to convince Hussein to see sense. I 
I knew my sister and his brother were scared too. But surely, together, we could make him put this right. presidential family and we aim to serve our country and the Iraqis are aware of this. That is on TV. Leaving Iraq was not a spontaneous decision. It took some time and much thought and must now be accompanied by radical action. We hope to change the regime whose wrong approach is leading to the What's collapse happening? of Iraq. It seems we just defected. I was formerly the Minister for Military Industry and also in charge of five other ministries. Yes. I intend to lead a new government. When was this? I see. attitude of the current regime. We could have stayed in Iraq, but outside of government, but instead we have chosen to flee Iraq with the intention... Of when the King of Jordan country, granted us asylum, I was hoping for a period of calm. But instead, I found myself in the eye of an international storm. We fear the outbreak of civil war. With one speech, Hussein had made himself an enemy of the state. And my father faced his worst political crisis since Kuwait. It was clear that those powers that had tried to oust my father would take full advantage of the situation. Imagine the no-fly zone was designed to do one thing and one thing only, to increase our capacity to monitor and to limit his ability to threaten his neighbors in light of his increased aggressiveness. That's ridiculous. Why can't I speak with Baghdad? On whose instructions exactly? Let me speak to the head of palace security. Did you do this? They won't put me through to Baghdad. Robert, would you take my guest next door? I won't be a moment. What the hell is going on? You told me we were lying low. Now you make Listen this, this announcement to the world that you're what? That you're going to overthrow my father? Are you insane? I couldn't tell you. You never have come. No, you're right. I wouldn't have. How could you do this to him? You owe my father everything. Saddam can't see what's going on anymore. He is dragging our country back to the Stone Age, surrounding himself with incompetence and psychopaths. Your brother will keep clawing more and more power, and when he takes over, what future does Iraq so have then? So instead, you expect to go rolling back to Baghdad, triumphant, the new glorious leader. The Republican Guard are my men. They'll be behind me. The Americans will back. The Americans. Iraq needs me. I am the only one who can unite the tribes. He'd be herding goats if it wasn't for my father. You ran away from him like a coward, and now you're stabbing him in the back. Well, I want nothing to do with this. And do not walk away from me, Ragard. Did you forget who you married? Your loyalty is to me, your husband. For now, you will stay here, and you will get manicures and watch videos and give me no trouble. Understand? I make the decisions. Excellency, the UN team are ready for your debriefing. I'll be there as soon as I finish my interview. It is requested that you go by the back corridor, so as to avoid the media at the front of the palace. As you wish. I need to get some things from the shops. We're very happy to bring you anything you need. Just write it down. His Majesty wants you to feel at home. My father will think I betrayed him too. Don't try and make any more calls.
I was caught between two fires, the fire of my husband and the fire of my father. And which is the greater duty? The loyalty of a wife or the loyalty of a daughter? What? I want to help. Sarah needs to go to the king. Demand them back. Send me. We need someone with authority. I'm all you've got left. I can do it. Put your faith in me. No. Then who? It's time to get Eliasa and al Majid out of retirement. Go. Go. Kuse, any word on Uday? Still missing. I'm working on it. You're a good boy. I need you here. I understand. I'm told my father refused to discuss anything but our return, even while the campaign to oust him was building momentum. So while you destroyed existing chemical, biological, and long-range weapons, you retained the designs and engineering details so they can be built at a future date? Yes. We hid the blueprints, computer disks, microfiches, all materials that would help us restart the weapons program as soon as we could. So all those months, years of visits to Iraq, all those inspections, all those meetings, you were lying to the UN. No, I was not lying to you, Saddam was. I was simply following his instructions. And now what? A new order. With you at the head? Yes. I see. Do you doubt the quality of the information that he uh, has passed on? Does it suggest to you that maybe he was allowed to leave so that he could somehow uh, provide disinformation to the West? I don't think anyone's thinking that this was some kind of grand plot by Saddam to, wants it to, uh, to fool us uh, in the West. He's not in a very strong position to do that anyway because uh, he's fairly weak. Kuse, come in, come in. What can I do for you? With my husband gone, the shortcomings of my father's remaining lieutenants became apparent. The president asked for me personally. Yes. That is a great honor. Ali Hassan had fallen out of favor with my father and had been retired on grounds of ill health. He was a difficult individual with a black history. The West knew him as Chemical Ali. His Majesty regrets that he cannot return the brothers Hussein and Saddam Kamal. When I heard he'd been sent to get us, I admit I was scared. What about the president's daughters? The king wants to assure President Saddam that he will keep the girls as safe as if they were his own daughters. But the negotiations didn't go well. My brother had insisted on accompanying him. I would need to ask the king, and sadly, he's not. Will you fucking say That's enough! I told you, sir, I can't divulge that information! We can burn up, and we'll tear this place apart till we find them! Show these gentlemen out. This way, please. And neither of them possessed my husband's diplomatic skills. The Jordanians refused to hand us over. Rumors circulated that my father had not slept or eaten for days. All government business had ground to a halt. I need to hear Dad's voice, but they won't put me through. Please stop being like Adam. Saddam won't tell me what's going on. I ask him all the time. I ask him when we can go home. Rana, listen to me. Listen to me. We're not going home. What's going to happen to us? I don't know. 
Dad will never get over this. The rule for chaos is thought tonight to have presented the Iraqi leadership with a stark choice. Abide by UN resolutions and look forward to the lifting of sanctions, or defy the United Nations and be prepared for another military strike. So far, there are no clues as to whether Iraq will back down and allow systematic monitoring of its military program. My father had faced many difficult situations in the past. The war with Iran, whose army outnumbered our own four to one. The battle to reclaim Kuwait, and the Shia insurgencies that followed. The determination of the United States in dealing with the problem in Iraq should not be underestimated. Once again, he found himself facing impossible odds. Hunted, alone, armed only with his wits. The UN inspectors are demanding to be allowed back in to carry on their search. If we refuse, there's no telling how the international community will respond. Yeah, but what do you want me to do? Let them in. You sure? Even when they won't reveal exactly how much Hussein Kamal has told them? Let them in. Hammonds have still got away with betraying us. Not yet. My father told us that it's only when a man faces such impossible odds that he discovers what he's really made of. It's impossible that you could be so stupid as to buy this. Can't you see what they've done? You've got to understand how it looks, General Kamal. Saddam's men led us to a farm, your farm. They showed us crates of documents we've been looking for for years. And now they're saying none of it was officially sanctioned. It was all your doing without the permission of the president. Yes, of course they'd say that. You know how they work. This was an exhibition for the UN's benefit. They planted all this stuff there. Give me one good reason why the UN should believe you. What? You would believe Saddam over me? It's your word against theirs. And you've both shown you can't be trusted. Now, I need to know if you have anything else. Anything else? Do you have anything I can take back to the UN in New York? Saddam did once talk about a plan to invade Saudi Arabia. Today, President Saddam Hussein's government staged a comeback after the damage done by the defection of key members of the regime last week. Good night, Father. Good night. General Hussein Kamal Amadji Go to bed, Ali. Was known I'll be in a minute. Iraq's weapons of mass destruction program, and it was thought likely that after his defection, he would cooperate with UN inspectors and reveal all he knew. But now, the Iraqi government alleges that General Hussein Kamal had been acting without authorization. A spokesman announced today that General Kamal had embezzled ministry funds to build up a private weapons program concealed from both UN inspectors and his own president Saddam Hussein he said it has come as a total shock to the Iraqi president who has not been seen in public since the defection of his two daughters and their husbands the president of why did I see this coming Hussein Kamal had stolen because you're not as clever as him millions of dollars to amass a personal fortune at the expense of the Iraqi people it is alleged that he abused his position to make an what the Americans have never understood, and what my husband should have remembered, is that when my father appears at his weakest, that is when you should fear him the most. Four months after my husband was abandoned by the Americans, he became hugely frustrated that he could no longer help the homeland he so loved. You 
were supposed to be here four hours ago. I got held up. What the fuck is more important than interviewing me? Well, you do the drink. I don't drink. Maybe you should sit. The world needs to know what is going on in Iraq. The corruption, the mass killings. Anyone who opposes the government or the family is kidnapped, tortured. And where were you when all this torture and corruption was going on? Right to the center. I had no choice. Are you going to write this story or not? Depends. What have you got? I am forming a new opposition group to be called the Higher Council for the Salvation of Iraq. We renounce foreign aid, and after the overthrow of Saddam Hussein, we promise elections, but not federalism. We... My newspaper has got no interest in this. There was a brief moment when we thought you had some credibility. I can unite Iraq. Saddam's finished. You don't understand. To the Sunnis, you're a traitor. To the Kurds, you're a mass murderer. And to the Shias, you're a heretic. The man who destroyed their holiest shrine and bragged about it. It's not Saddam that's finished, it's you! you fucking traitor! Oh. It's fuck! Oh. Fucking kill you! It's oh. fucking traitor! Ah. Shit, how dare he talk to me like that? How dare You can't behave like that! Why are you never on my side? I am on your side. I'm your wife. I love you. Do you? I'm still here. Why? I have failed you. to bed. He needed me. Whatever the circumstances, I would stand by my husband. It's the same within a tribe. What man? My brother. Excellency. If one of them makes a mistake, it becomes the responsibility of all of them. The doctor says your operation went well. <laughs> The fourth one, yes. He thinks I'll need further surgery. And did you punish Uday yet? It was an accident. He sprayed the whole room with bullets. Are you saying it was a murder attempt? <laughs> well, what would you call it? Well, I'd call it... an accident. He tried to kill me. A terrible. Accident. If it was anything else, that wouldn't be very bad. Very bad indeed. Perhaps you're right. Stupid accident. Family is very dear to me. And in these troubled times, we must all stick together. Who say you're a piece of fucking shit? You have got your head so far off this fucking arm. Don't you? Good day, my boy. It's good that you've come to see him at last. What are you doing? Black one's very upset. He feels you owe him reparation. Reparation? Give him the gun and let him shoot you in the leg where you shot him. But... What? Do it. An eye for an eye. for a knife.
No. No, no, no. It was an accident. A terrible accident. Father loved his children. We heard that he was putting his house in order, that Uday had finally been spoken to. Eventually, he reached out to us too and sent word that he forgave us. When did this come? This morning. I told you, I knew Dad wouldn't desert us. Now we can go back. Has the Sane seen this? Yes. He thinks we should go. Something's not right. Why would Dad just let us go back like this? You know how much he values family. He will never forgive Hussein for this. Your husband knew what the plan was when we left Iraq. It's part of this too. Saddam will never leave Jordan now. Hussein won't go back without him. I need your help with this, Rana. We are choking here. Every day the children ask us, when will we see Grandpa again? The journalist is pressing charges. Hussein could go to prison. I give you my word that you have my complete forgiveness and that you will not be persecuted when you return. I don't know. Can you be certain? Yes. Yeah. Uh. 
How are you finding your new accommodation? Is it to your liking? It is completely inadequate. The rooms are far too small. Unfortunately, your previous apartment is due for essential maintenance. This is a temporary measure. I want to see the king now. I'm very sorry. His Majesty can't see you. The king feels it would be inappropriate to see you before your forthcoming trial. This is an outrage. That man insulted me. Yes, that's as maybe, but here in Jordan we have a rule of law, and the law must run its course. Excuse me, sir. The minister will see you straight away. Ah, if you'll excuse me, I'll arrange a car for you. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. We have to go home. I know my father better than anyone. He won't break his word to me. Yes, I know your father too, and it would be suicide. I told you he wants us back. He would never harm his own flesh and blood. Oh, come on. She's right. There's nothing for us here. need me. He needs me. Of course he needs me. My husband's defection had almost brought down the government. I knew he and his brother would be stripped of all position and would have to regain my father's trust. But at least we'd all be together again. to Amman. We can use the other car. You go to Baghdad if you want. Better to die in Iraq than rot in a Jordanian jail. None of this was anything to do with me. This was all you. We are brothers. My fate is yours. Want to see our papers? No, General. Carry on. Welcome back. My husband had not just betrayed my father. He had also disgraced the tribe and would have to answer to them. But my father loved Hussein like a son. He would protect him. his word. Then you've got nothing to worry about, have you? Disarm it. The women and children are coming with us. No. You and your brother are staying here. No, 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 no. 
You're gonna come to me, Annie. No! 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 Consider yourselves under house arrest. You, make sure they don't leave the room. Why have they got my husband? Welcome back. Answer me. You look exhausted. Come, sit down. I don't want to sit down. I want you to answer me. What were Uday and Ali Hassan doing waiting for us at the house? Ali Hassan is the head of the Kamel's tribe. But you gave your word. In writing, you said they wouldn't be harmed. The tribe must decide his fate. You can't let those butchers kill my husband. This is tribal justice. The president is above such things. You can still save him. Tell them. I can't. One word from you and they'll stop. You're going to let them murder him. If only he had come to me all those months ago. No. No, please. He had a choice. He had no choice. Can't you see? This is why we ran. It was you who started this madness. Everything I have done, I have done for my family. No, you pitted your family against each other and you're surprised when they start tearing each other apart. Yeah, but please. What's this? Your divorce papers. No. You'd have those little ones grow up the children of a traitor. I won't sign them. You choose that man over me. I love him. You'll do your duty and sign these papers. You'll do it for me. You'll do it for your country. And you'll do it for your children. I see now who you really are. I'm your father. We're carved from the same style. I'm nothing like you. I'm empty. Is it really possible that my father, who loved his daughter so, would turn them both into widows in one day? What kind of love would that be? According to what I have heard, none of the tribal elders agreed with what Ali Hassan did. You have company. The date was February the 23rd, 1996. <laughs> Please, what is happening? Please, please, please. You spare my family. They are innocent. Do what you want with me. Me. None of you are innocent. of the brutality of the regime of Saddam Hussein seems to know no bounds. I think that the brutality of this um, and the uh, whole way that they were welcomed and pardoned and murdered um, shows, I think, a great deal about the way Saddam Hussein believes that he deals with people. 
Ali Hassan al-Majid announced today that the al-Majid tribe had rid itself of the traitors Hussein and Saddam Kamel. It is wrong for a person who has given his life and his youth in the service of his country in so many, many ways to be described as a traitor. had a cancer which had to be cut out. With the death of the traitors, the tribe has restored its honor. That is all I will say. It is wrong. See the president Saddam Hussein and will never forgive those who betray him. There are many lies told about that time after our husbands died that we were hidden away, that no one wanted to see us because we were daughters who had disgraced their father. Of course, this is untrue. There were many who wanted to see us, but not out of sympathy. Some wanted to gloat. For others, it was simple curiosity. How could these girls carry on with their lives after what had happened to them? We didn't want to see anyone. It was our decision. Mum, it's going... No, your Aunt Rana is coming. I told you to get ready. I am ready. Well, go and wash your face. But, Mum, is Grandad coming? No. Go and wash your face and tell the others to get ready, too. They are ready. I knew my father was waiting for me to reach out to him. I wasn't ready to do so. You must never, ever try and do something like that again. I don't know what I have left to live for. Your children. That's what. If only we'd stayed in Iraq, none of this would have happened. Run, not, not this again. The most important thing now is the children. We must protect them. Hmm? Protect them? <laughs> How can we protect them from our family? With my husband gone, my father turned to those he felt he could trust the most. My brothers. Kuse rose up the ranks of the Special Security Office. Uday was made Minister for Youth. So, boys, this dear Ferrari. Rackett's refusing to have anything to do with it. Uh, her husband was taken from her. Such things are not easily forgiven. It's an important day for little Ali. The tribe must be allowed to make reparations for his father's death. She won't want me, though. Don't worry, Abba. I'll see to the arrangements. Good boy. My father always said that his regime was not a monarchy. But we all understood that Uday was his heir apparent. Ali! 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 And my son, the next in line. Today you get to sit on a throne and wear the robes of the tribe. Great! <laughs> all the men of the tribe will give you money. You're the head of the family now. Oh. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I told you I didn't want this, dear. It's for Ali, not you. Come on, Oz. You must eat something. I really don't want to. You must Except eat this your my warmest wishes. Thank you, Ali. My son no longer mentioned his father.
Ali had to learn what it meant to be born into Iraq's first family. My father used to say to us, you are Iraqis. Whatever happens to the country should happen to you too. Since you have benefited from being in power, so must you endure both sides of the situation. And if the Iraqi people are suffering, why should you not suffer too? Pistachio. Pistachio makes me puke. <laughs> so you want pistachio, right? <laughs> Son of a prostitute. So sorry, Excellency. Can you save him? Although his left leg has been very badly damaged, the main area of concern is the pelvis. Can you save him? I hope so, but it will require a highly skilled surgeon. I know someone in Paris. I'll get him. My brother never fully recovered from his injuries. Neither did my father. The last time I saw my father was five days before the American invasion. I'll be with you, my boy. I noticed that he was watching me. He was filling his eyes with his daughter. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Ali. My boy. You take care of your mother. I'll try. Do one. You have always been the wisest of my children. Goodbye, Yaba.
We would never see each other again. Don't be sad. Today is a great day. As the first bombs fell, I fled Baghdad with my sister Rana and our children. We barely escaped with our lives. People said that I celebrated the night my brothers were killed. Nothing could be further from the truth. I comforted my children through their nightmares. For eight months, we had no word of our father. But then on December the 13th, 2003, we finally heard. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. This is a great day in Iraq's history. For decades, hundreds of thousands of you suffered at the hands of this cruel man. For decades, Saddam Hussein divided you citizens against each other. For decades, he threatened and attacked your neighbors. Those days are over forever. Medical examination proved that he had, They talked uh, about him as uh, though he were a monster. But health. all I saw was my father, looking old and alone. As appointed by your daughter, Ragad, she'll be coordinating your defense. The Americans haven't given us much time. First, I need to cover any complaints you have about food and accommodation. Then on to our preparations for the trial. I'm afraid they've not been forthcoming. Many people are surprised that I stood up for my father, that I chose to defend him. Now they call me Little Saddam. But I am my father's daughter, and that's all the world will ever let me be. And now that he is gone, I can only console myself with the knowledge that as he went to his death, he knew that I forgave him.